series, Everyday Fresh, I'm going to show you how to create smarter, faster, super yum meals using everyday ingredients and making them shine. There's nothing better than a recipe that makes you feel great, is super delicious, nutritionally upscaled, and helps bring a little balance to your life. And of course, I'll be cooking some amazingly good, almost healthy sweets, full of super nice, better for you ingredients. If you need speedy dinner solutions, fresh food in an instant, that delivers on taste as well as time, then Everyday Fresh is just for you. I just know you are going to love having a little Everyday Fresh in your life. In this episode, I'll be cooking a cauliflower rice bowl with crispy chili eggs, showing you my favorite shortcut that will save you on prep time forever. Then I'll be making a super delicious caramel, coconut, and cashew bliss bowl that's so wonderfully simple and all mixed in one bowl. So delicious and packed full of all the good things, you'll have trouble stopping at just one. I'll be cooking the most velvety smooth, mousse-like baked chocolate cheesecake. Wait till you find out my secret ingredient. You'll be blown away. First up, I'll be making one of my favorite recipes. It's a light and pillowy ricotta and kale gnocchi baked in a tomato and balsamic sauce. Cooked all in one pan, it's sure to become your new go-to dish full of green goodness. So simple, so yum. This recipe is my oven-baked kale gnocchi with balsamic tomatoes. And there are so many reasons to love this recipe. Not only is it all cooked in one pan, super delicious, great way to hide a ton of veg into one really yummy meal. Beautiful, pillowy, soft kale gnocchi. We should get going. First of all, we're gonna make a tomato sauce in our roasting dish and pop it in the oven. I've got three cans of cherry tomatoes. Just gonna slide those into the bottom of my baking dish. A splash of balsamic vinegar in with some stock. Now you can use vegetable stock or chicken stock, it's up to you. Some sliced garlic, four cloves. I've got it sliced so it gives big punchy garlic flavor instead of crushed. I really like it that way. Salt and pepper, tomatoes love salt and pepper. Dash of olive oil just to carry all those beautiful flavors together. I'm using quite a robust olive oil because I think this dish can really handle that really lovely robust olive flavor. And then just two large stalks of basil. Just pop those in. I'm just going to cover it with a sheet of foil. My baking dish doesn't have a lid. If you have a baking dish with a lid, then just use that off to the oven and then on with the gnocchi. Now all we need to do is make the gnocchi, which is so simple. It's not potato-based gnocchi, it's ricotta-based gnocchi. And it's full of one of my favorite super greens, kale. And I've just got some kale leaves. I've removed the stem, then I've just blanched it and chopped it up. So what we're left with is this beautiful super greens into our bowl. Then some lemon, because I love greens and lemon. Just scrape off the yellow bit using a fine grater. To that, grated parmesan for a beautiful flavor as well as saltiness. Then some fresh ricotta. The ricotta makes the base to our gnocchi, so it's quite a bit of beautiful, fresh, creamy ricotta. Then we've got some flat leaf parsley. I finely chopped it. That goes in. Salt and pepper. And then to bind it together, brown rice flour over the top, mix that together. It's really simple from here. Once it's all mixed together, just gonna divide it into four portions, roll it, chop it into that tomato sauce. It's basically done. we need 
going to do, look at that, it's so good. Just pop the gnocchi into our bubbling cherry tomato sauce. Oh, it's so pretty and it smells so good. It's like food starter's dream here. Just back into the oven, another 15 minutes. Fabulous. This looks so good, smells amazing. All we need to do to finish this off, really lovely, generous grate of Parmesan over the top and then some extra fresh basil to give it that lovely burst. Just pick some of those small leaves off, just pop them over the top. Time for me to try just a little bit. Just scoop out one from the corner. Oh. Look at that crunchy top, a little bit of tomato sauce, a bit of basil, a bit of everything there. It was so easy. Oh my goodness, the combination of the ricotta with the kale and the lemon is so delicious and then all baked in that beautiful balsamic tomato sauce. It's so good. Who would have thought eating all that kale would be so delicious? This recipe is my cauliflower rice bowls with crispy chili eggs. It's actually become one of my boy's favorites to have for dinner, which is fantastic because it's loaded with veg and then topped with super crunchy, zingy chili eggs, their absolute favorite. Now, when I get home from work, the last thing I wanna do is get out of food processors. So I've devised a way to grate my cauliflower into little rice sized pieces. And the great thing about cauliflower is that it comes with its own inbuilt handle. So what I do is I just grab the cauliflower and on a sharp box grater, just start grating. Look at that, it's just cutting through that cauliflower in no time. That looks like just about enough. Just going to make a really well flavored oil to toss my cauliflower in. Very fresh olive oil. It's got a nice mid-weight flavor to it. Just lovely to carry through the oregano and the garlic. Just pop those in our oil. Give that a little mix around. Just want to flavor that oil. Okay, that looks good. Okay, in with the cauliflower. And we just want to soften that. So it only takes a couple of minutes just to soften down. Four or five minutes. So just turn it over. Some salt and pepper. Season. Just gently turn it over so all of the cauliflower gets mixed in with that garlic and that beautiful, well-flavored oil. It's a really fantastic way to get a whole heap of veg into your dinner and it's so super tasty. Okay, that's nice and soft. And the last thing I'm going to do is just add lots of baby spinach to this and fold it through, and let it wilt through the cauliflower. It's going to wilt right down, so I'm trying to jam as much goodness into this pan as I can. And if I set it aside, it'll just give me enough time to make my chili eggs. Really simple, you do need a lid. So I've actually got a saucepan lid to go over my fry pan. Just check that it fits, it does. In with some oil. This is kind of fast and furious. We want crispy chili eggs, so be generous with your olive oil. Got some sliced red chilies. Now you can use large red chilies, which have less heat, or small ones if you like it super hot. Flick that around. In with some green onions. We just wanna get some color on that. Get those chilies nice and crisp. Okay, they're about halfway to crispy. So I just make two little holes for my eggs. One on this side. One in there. And then on with the lid. And that's gonna cook it really evenly because it's gonna steam the top as well. I'm gonna cook it so the yolk's just soft inside. Okay, my eggs look exactly like my son Tom likes them cooked. This is his favorite dish, so let's make it for him. 
big pile of veg for him. Okay, these look great. I'm really happy with these chili eggs. Beautiful, crispy chilies and green onions. And the yolks are still nice and runny, just the way Tom likes it. So this is gonna be just for him. Just these extra chilies from the pan, all crunchy and golden. Beautiful. Such a simple dinner, so much veg, so much yum. Let me just show you. This is what Tom would do at home. He'd break that egg and mix it all in with the cauliflower and it wouldn't look like his mother was a food stylist at all. But that's gorgeous. Nice soft chili egg, cauliflower, spinach, all the good things here. I'm gonna have a taste for him. He'd want me to. Yum. So much goodness, yet so much yum. My boys are gonna be super happy when I get home tonight. That is absolutely delicious. This next recipe is my coconut caramel cashew bliss balls. And yes, you do need another recipe for bliss balls because this one doesn't have any dates in it and it doesn't use a food processor. All in one bowl, super simple, yet super, super tasty. Smooth cashew butter, then some desiccated coconut, maple syrup for sweetness, and a dash of vanilla. Super simple, just need to mix that all together. And then we just need to roll it into balls. Little caramel cashew balls full of protein, energy, sweetness and goodness. Who doesn't love a protein rich bliss bowl that requires no food processor? Just four ingredients all in one bowl. These caramel cashew coconut bliss balls. Naturally rich in protein, really delicious. Such a treat. This dessert recipe from my book, Everyday Fresh, is baked chocolate tofu cheesecake. And before you tune out, Yes, I said the word tofu, but this cheesecake is delicious. I wouldn't lie to you. You've stayed with me this long. This cheesecake is amazing. And if you have a friend like I have that's dairy free, that thinks they're never gonna eat cheesecake again, when they arrive at your house and you've made them this delicious, velvety smooth cheesecake that they can eat, they are gonna love you forever. So I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's seriously, Stay with me, tofu dislikers. It's amazing. The base is really simple, just happens to be gluten-free as well. This cheesecake ticks so many boxes. Base is three things, desiccated coconut, cashew butter, and some maple syrup. All you need to do is mix that together. Makes a delicious caramelly coconut base. Okay, that is nicely combined. So onto our trick for our spring form tin. So, Spring fawn tins have a lip and an underside. I turn it upside down and I simply take a piece of my fabulous compostable brown paper, push it over the base, push it up slightly and then click it in. Okay, in with the base and then into the oven just for 10 minutes, just to cook that base through. Just twist it till it's even. Base is in, it's nice and flat and smooth. 10 minutes, and while that's baking, we can make our filling. Now, let's chat tofu. It can be quite polarizing, but I tell you what, it does make a super creamy, really light base to this cheesecake. So this is silken tofu. It's the one that's all wobbly and jelly-like, and you just need to drain it. Just pop it in the food processor some cocoa powder, some brown sugar, which will give it a lovely caramel flavor. In without dark chocolate, a little bit of corn flour, and then we just whiz it all together. 
away we go. Yum, look at that. Really silky smooth, luscious cheesecake filling. Just in time for the base. Smells good. Wow, that looks so luscious, velvety smooth. Beautiful thing about making this cheesecake is that it cooks to a combination of a baked fluffy mousse style cheesecake, which is absolutely delicious. Not too heavy, not too light, it's just perfect. Just going to smooth that over with my palette knife before I pop it in the oven so it's got a really lovely top. Oh, how good does that look? Cheesecake's been chilling, it's nice and cold. Just going to release it from the side of the tin really gently. Easiest way to serve our cheesecake, and because we've baked it on this lovely brown paper, is just to slide it, paper and all, onto the cake stand. And then I like to serve it playing on this dairy-free vibe with some whipped coconut cream. Just put a generous scoop on the top. A little swirl like that, and then finish it with some beautiful fresh blueberries. Gorgeous. All that's left to do is for me to take a slice and have a try. See that beautiful texture that the tofu gives the cheesecake? It's like baked chocolate mousse. Beautiful. Bit of that, bit of that. Oh my goodness. It's, it's light, but it's fluffy, and it's rich, but it's not too rich, not too sweet. It is seriously amazing chocolate cheesecake. Just one more bite. Delicious. Mm. 